so really happy to be here. Uh, would it be even happier to be physically <laughs> in, in England or, or somewhere else than, than our office? Well, I'm happy to be even in the office rather than working from, our, from uh, my kitchen table where I have been working for, uh, for the last, I'll, I don't know how long has, has it already been. Uh, but hopefully, uh, maybe, maybe the next GeoViz event, uh, I, I can also visit you in person. Uh, but super happy to be here and, and super happy to talk about my, uh, my, my favorite topic, basically, uh, which is the 30 day map challenge. Um, the title calls it the social mapping, mapping experiment. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain a bit more uh, on, on what it is, how it has evolved and, and what kind of results has it, has it brought and, and what can be expected later on. So hope you enjoy the talk. Um, Paul introduced me quickly, um, but a few words about me. Um, there's me casually having a beer. Uh, and uh, I have been working here at, at Gispo where I, where I currently work. I've been here for two and a half years. And, and like Paul mentioned, I spent way too much time on, on, on social media and especially on Twitter. Well, Paul put it in, in nicer words, but still. Um, my personal website contains uh, maps and, and blogs about maps and, and, and some tutorials um, and, and some talks I've given before. Uh, so geospatial data visualization is really like my, my alley, uh, up my alley. I really like to do it and I get to do it at my work um, because this office hours, I have also one corporate slide uh, about where I work. So I work at Gispo, like Paul mentioned. Uh, we've been around for around 10 years. Uh, I think we're 15 people now. Um, and we're focused on, on open source GIS and open data. And, and we do a lot of training, uh, software development, consulting work. Uh, and for example, QGIS is probably the main tool that I, that I, that I use in my work. Uh, but if you have any kind of like professional questions, uh, I'm happy to, happy to answer and, and feel free to contact me. Uh, but then, about the actual challenge, uh, what it is and, and how, how it started. Uh, so, it started in, in 2019, uh, two years ago. Um, I was sitting uh, in the bus on my way to, to the office, and I was browsing Twitter once again, and then I saw some posts from Inktober, and, and Inktober is this uh, like a artistic drawing challenge uh, for for people who do th that kind of stuff. The idea is that in, in October you post for each each day there is a theme which is like a vague theme um, and, and, and then people interpret it in a way they want and then uh, post their drawings and on our, our artistic work uh, on social media. So I I got the idea that why not do it in, in, a, in a cartographic context? Uh, and so, so I, I started drafting the idea, uh, basically uh, took, out a, took out my notes and, and drafted 30 different themes that could be used for map making, uh, and then, then posted it to, to, to Twitter. I first thought that uh, maybe a few people that I would be doing the maps, the 30 maps, and maybe a few people would, would join along, but uh, it turned out quite, quite different. Uh, so uh, the, the so-called rules that the, that the challenge has, they, they are intentionally really vague so that everyone can join in, everyone can, can, can enjoy the challenge. Um, but, but the idea is that it happens in, uh, in uh, November, uh, and and for each day, thirty days, uh, for each day there is also a theme for for maps, and and then then you can see how how you interpret the te theme, and 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 what kind of map could be could could be made from that theme, and then you don't have to sign up anywhere, you don't have to post it to a specific place, uh, you just post it to to social media. Uh, most people use Twitter for this um, and, and post it there using the hashtag. And, and just as well as you can do 30 maps, you can do one map, uh, or you can just enjoy the, the great uh, 
outputs that the, that the challenge produces. And you can use whatever tools you want, uh, whatever data you can find. So I, I, I hope you, hope you get, get the idea. If something is unclear, I'm happy to answer afterwards. But then it was first in 2019, and the second one was uh, last year, uh, 2020. So the key figures from 2020 were uh, that there were more than 7,000 maps made, more than 1,000 people making the maps, uh, the challenge happened in, in more than 70 countries, meaning that the participants were from 70 different countries, more than 30 languages, uh, 20,000 retweets, and more than 100,000 likes. So it has really uh, exploded in, in a good way. And um, I'm super happy about it. And, and every time I, I think about the figures, it's uh, overwhelming. And, and why this is, uh, why, why the numbers are pretty vague, vague is that these numbers are only from, from Twitter. And the challenge is also happening nowadays elsewhere. So some people are doing it in Facebook groups, some people are doing it on Instagram or, or elsewhere. Uh, and then about the maps. So there you can see, those are all the maps from last year. That's, that's it. Uh, but seriously, uh, there were some people doing uh, really interesting statistics from the maps, uh, and and this is uh, from GitHub from from uh, from a guy called Hai Feng New, uh, who did really uh, good Twitter anal analytics, and and he did this this kind of collection from all the maps, and they are, if I remember right, they are in in um, ordered by date. So for example, when there was Blue Day, you can you can kind of like see it there, uh, all kinds of fun stuff, but I'll go to individual maps uh, later on. Uh, but then more stats before that. Uh, so uh, as, as we people in general, we are lazy and at the same time doing 30 maps is a huge challenge. So uh, this is an obvious trend uh, that uh, in the beginning of November, many people start the challenge really excited uh, with, with the, let's say the easy challenges, uh, a map, map with points, map with lines, map with polygons. And then, then it's uh, uh, only the, the insane ones remain in the end. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this shows how many people completed each map, uh, meaning the, the daily map. Uh, and, and it's uh, surprisingly uh, big even in the, in, in the latter uh, parts of, of November. Uh, then really bad news for you guys. Uh, I, I just checked yesterday the, the latest stats from last year and the US uh, just won you by one cartographer. So if there's someone listening now who didn't participate last year, we need your, or, or the UK needs your input because uh, uh, US was, uh, was number one with 93 different people doing it. UK, France, and as you can see from the countries, it's uh, it's really a global challenge, and, and that's that's something I'm really proud proud of. And um, Finland is there with five cartographers, and all of these stats are harvested from Twitter, so these are not uh, like absolute values, and and, and uh, it's quite hard to um, know exact numbers, but but these are the let's say best guesses that, that we can get. Uh, then, if you think of uh, what tools were used to make the maps, um, QGIS uh, seems to be number one. Um, uh, there is a huge R community uh, which uh, embraced the challenge. Uh, so there were a lot of people, a lot of people doing maps with R. Uh, then ArcGIS, Python, Area, Lot, Mapbox, and, and then it goes down from there. But um, I was thinking to myself that. It might also be that with QGIS and R, people like to tell um, that I use these tools. People like to share their uh, their um, um, methodologies more or something like this. But still, uh, quite interesting to see the uh, how how different tools were used. And I'm I'm all myself. I like I mentioned, I use QGIS daily. I'm um, actively involved in the QGIS community and. And I know that people from the QGIS community were doing the challenge. So it might be that that's also one reason why, why it's so popular. 
Uh, like I mentioned, the challenge was happening also elsewhere, uh, which, uh, which is quite amazing. Um, before last year's challenge, one person sent me a message from Israel saying that, can I start a Facebook group for Israeli uh, map makers? Because most of them aren't on, on Twitter, so where we could do the map challenge. And I said, yeah, please go ahead. I don't, one thing I didn't mention, like, I don't own the challenge. It's, uh, there's a community around it. Uh, I just come up with 30 themes. <laughs> I've, I've done it two years and I'm planning to do it also this year. Um, but uh, the community has grown around the challenge. And for example, on, on just on Instagram, you can find uh, more than 15, 1,500 maps uh, under the hashtag. And people are doing it on Facebook. Uh, I, I also saw people posting on LinkedIn. Uh, then I saw on, on Reddit, uh, I, saw, I saw the maps being posted. So it's quite cool that it's happening in different, different uh, arenas. Uh, one example of, uh, of an insane approach to the challenge was uh, by Alex, Alexander Kmoch from Tartu University, who's a, he's a research fellow there. He did all the 30 maps uh, with Python, and he released a, a, a Jupyter Notebook from each of his maps. And he did a, did a website for, for them. And, uh, and, and you can see he did a uh, talk about it on, at the GeoPython uh, conference uh, this year, and it's a uh, really, really insane, insane thing what he did there. He he tried out different tools, and and you can you can check his talk online. Uh, then an, another insane thing about the challenge is that uh, how much time people spent making the maps. I, I did a poll on Twitter asking. How, many, how much time people spent on average. And I was amazed that most of the people said that they spent more than two hours per map. Of course, this doesn't mean that, um, this means that many people did like part of the, just a few maps, maybe five maps or, or two maps and spent two hours on those. Um, but still, uh, I'm, like I said last year that I'm, I'm really sorry for the global GIS and cartographic community because I uh, probably the productivity of people went went down because uh, they spent most of their working hours doing the map challenge. Uh, okay, so a lot of lot of stats, a lot of talk, but then uh, of course you want to see see some maps. So what I what I did here because I didn't want to uh, race one map over over the other. Like I mentioned, this is not a not a competition. You can do it in so different ways. You can be a beginner or or a pro, and everybody's free to, free to join in. So um, from Haifeng News uh, Analytics, I took for each thirty maps, I took the the one that got most likes on Twitter, which is uh, I think it was a good approach to show you some some ideas how what kind of stuff people did, and and it's a good way to also show. Um, uh, show the themes, go through the teams. Um, I'm not going to go uh, very deeply in all, in all of this because I don't, uh, I have all, in each one of them, I have the, the Twitter account who, who has posted it, uh, but I don't know the stories behind, behind all of these. But um, like I mentioned, the app ch challenge starts off pretty easily. So the first theme has been on both, both years, it has been points. Uh, so here are, my Spanish uh, isn't that good, so some points in, in Chile, which for some reason I, I got a lot of likes. Well, it, it's a nice, nice uh, contact for, for product, but I don't really know <laughs> what it's about. Uh, second day is, is lines. Uh, this is a, a, a 3D uh, representation of, of a, a railway line in India. Uh, three, day three, yay, this is mine. Uh, it's it's polygons, so this is ma made with QGIS and it's buildings in San Francisco with a with a QGIS style that I, I developed. Uh, then uh, hexagons uh, was was day number four. Uh, this is again from India and it seems to be some kind of like a multivariate approach to uh, the religious landscape in Kerala. Uh, then seems like multivariate maps are 
getting a lot of likes as well as hexagons. So this is day uh, blue that got the most likes. Uh, day red, uh, day six was red. So as you can see, uh, first there was points, lines, polygons, then then come color themes. Uh, so uh, I think this is this is from a graphic perspective really nice, really nice map. Uh, then the green. Uh, this is uh, again mine, so I can say something more about this. Uh, this was uh, internet speeds uh, around the globe. This was just just one layer, nothing else. Uh, like this was open data from from this tested internet speed. So that that was that. Uh, more colors, yellow. Uh, again, it was, this was lighthouses in India. Uh, monochrome, which where many people, of course, did uh, black and white maps. Uh, and, and this is again, this elevation profile this time from India. Uh, 3D map looks amazing. I, I, I think uh, I think this is on Antarctica. Yeah, uh, it's Antarctica. Um, so, so 3D day was, I think, one which was um, people really uh, did approach it differently, and, and, and a lot of cool, uh, cool maps were produced. Uh, <laughs> this is probably my favorite day, and and this is, uh, I think, like half of the maps could be with with this topic. So, uh, I came up with a topic map that is not made with GIS software, and the the input was was great. Um, this is uh, carrot production in France. So it, it, at the same time, it's a 3D map of, of let's see, tra carrots and, and then the shape of France there. It's, this is maybe one of my favorites uh, in, in the whole, whole challenge. Uh, raster, um, stay 13. Of course, you can do all days with raster, uh, but this is uh, just one. Uh, uh, one day that's specifically uh, for rasters. Really nice map again. Uh, climate change. Uh, and, and here you can see that uh, this is probably one of those maps where it has taken a bit more than 30 minutes to do. And, and, and one, one of the so-called rules in the challenge was that um, if you've done something before, or if you've done something, let's say, for your PhD worker map, you're totally free to post it. Uh, on that day. You don't have to do it on that day. Uh, the most important thing is that it's your own work. That's, uh, that's the bottom line, uh, that you don't steal maps from others or, or just, just repost something else, someone else's. I don't think it's about productivity, the, the, the main idea. Uh, connections, uh, again, uh, internet speed data, uh, islands, uh, this was one of those days which produced a lot of cool, uh, cool inputs. Uh, historical map. Uh, can't remember the story behind this one, but uh, but as you can see, uh, on on many days people approached uh, the maps more from an infographic uh, perspective, which was really interesting. Uh, land use. Uh, if I remember right, this was one of those days that people didn't find so exciting. So maybe dropping this category uh, this year. Null, uh, map is showing where population in Finland is null. So no one living in the, the orange areas. Uh, population, hey, here's one from the UK for all of you. Uh, really nice 3D repre representation of population in the UK's national parks. Uh, water. Uh, maybe too close to the islands theme, I don't know, uh, but a really cool map of fishing activity in the Mediterranean Sea. I think this is really funny because it takes some time for you to see Italy there and then the Mediterranean. Really cool, cool map. Movement, uh, this was an animation. So um, showing this, this screen here doesn't really tell you much, but it, it compared, uh, cycling, walking, and, and, and car times to, to move. Uh, boundaries, hey, once, once again, uh, for, from the UK, a really nice uh, graphic representation and, uh, and 
combining like uh, infographic features to to traditional core plus maps really nice elevation i uh, i would say that this is more of an artwork than that map <laughs> really nice R render uh covid19 uh it had to be there as a category uh, in 2020. Won't be there <laughs> in 21. Uh, but this is very interesting because it shows the interest in banana bread, which is, I think, uh, way way more interesting than uh, than, than COVID-19 uh, it, it itself. Uh, map with a new tool. Uh, so so somebody did with uh, this was done with the with a water hose. So. <laughs> someone did it in their in their yard uh, just crazy innovative stuff and, and this was actually also one of my my favorite days because it forced people myself including uh to search for something new and, and to try something out even even if the end result would be visually really simple and and, and not that amazing it would, it would be nice because uh, one of the main ideas behind the challenge is to learn new things and to share your knowledge. So, so this day forced to do that. Uh, big or small data. Uh, so I thought that big data is too challenging. So small data is there as, as an option. Uh, this was also an animation. So sorry for the boring, um, boring screenshot. It was a really cool animation. I think it was whale, whales, the, the animals, not the of the country that this was showing. Uh, Non-geographic map. Uh, this was, uh, I just transformed uh, an image to, to contour lines. And, and I, I'm really annoyed that I didn't notice that I could have called this Mapadona rather than Maradona. Something, someone pointed it out to me on, on Twitter. Uh, globe, <laughs> this one was fun. As uh, so th this was also an animation, I highly recommend you to go check it out. Someone did like a theme for the challenge uh, on the day when the globe was, was the theme. So it's like uh, I think it's Universal Studios that has the uh, has the same. It has the Universal Studios music and and, and well, go check it out. Uh, and then finally, I think I ran out of ideas when when making the categories. So I, I thought that on last day, if you've survived so far, you can just do whatever you like, a map of any kind. Just checking my time and still some, looks like, because we're closing in, uh, looks like I'm still on time. So um, that was 2020. I think it was, uh, it was a success. Uh, I'm really happy about it. Uh, and uh, I, I got a lot of positive feedback from it. So of course the ha challenge is happening in 21 too. I think the informal structure that the challenge has that you can interpret the challenges the way you want uh, and, and you, can, you can join in, jump out, uh, works really well. Uh, it leaves room for creativity and, and you, can, you can post what, that one map from your PhD uh, on one day or then you can you can do it like a marathon and do do simple maps, simple thirty maps. But every, everyone's welcome. Um, I will, like I mentioned, some of the categories work better than others. I will tweak them a bit. Uh, and after last year, I I, I registered myself thirty day map challenge com domain. Uh, it's already live there's nothing yet in it uh, so far the instructions and categories and everything has been on on github uh, and it's will be also there uh, in the future but i thought that uh, a, let's say a normal web page outside of github will be uh, more attractive to uh, let's say non-developer oriented people mm, so i i think I think uh, putting them on a on, on .com site will attract even more people to, to the challenge. And one thing I'm most proud, the thing that I'm most proud of is this, there is the community that has evolved, that has been built around the challenge and it has grown organically. So uh, like some person did a Twitter bot that tweets all the maps that use the hashtag. Uh, then there were these people doing the, 
uh, metadata analysis, like I showed here, like David Friggins and, and, and Haifeng knew. Uh, huge thanks to those people. Then there were these people organizing local local versions of the challenge. So I'm really happy that it's not dependent on me, uh, but people really do it in their own way and, and, and in their own environment. And like I mentioned, the R community is a, is a crazy example. A lot of people there doing it with R and, and sharing R tutorials and, and really interesting to see how, uh, how what kind of paths the, the whole challenge is taking. And if I didn't mention it yet, uh, the most important thing about the challenge is to have fun, is to make, make maps, uh, share knowledge. And, and I have in, in the code of conduct in GitHub, I have a few bullet points. And the last one is don't be an asshole. So have fun, share your knowledge, share your maps. And, and, and that, that's the main idea. And thanks everyone who, who's now joined, joined the conference who, who did. Uh, did maps last year, and, and even if you didn't, uh, thanks for bearing uh, the content on, on, on Twitter, and I really hope that uh, you take part also this year, and all feedback is more than welcome. So, thanks a lot. Thanks, Toppy. That was amazing. I thought you it would be. Um, I love the way that there are so many great maps being made by people and that the community is like fully embraced it. So it'd be great to see it again this year. So I'm really looking forward to what the new categories might be. I mean, you've mentioned that you've, you're going to tweak some of those categories a little bit. Do you encourage um, people to kind of come to you with ideas through Twitter and that or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I also asked some ideas last year uh, and, and I, I plan to, uh, release the categories like one month ahead. Uh, so uh, one month from now, I will release the categories and then two months from now will be the challenge. Um, and absolutely, if you have any ideas or, or what works, what doesn't work, more than happy to hear. I got some really great ideas last year from, from Twitter when I asked for feedback. And, and I was thinking maybe like one, one day could be that there would be a fixed data set that what you can make from this data would be a nice, nice different approach for, for this year. But we'll see. But absolutely uh, happy to hear all ideas. Oh, that's really good to hear. So if anyone has got any ideas for um, uh, subjects, perhaps they could put them in a the chat topic today. And yeah. Happy to yeah. Pick that up. Um, one more question from me. Um, there are, I've noticed that recently there's been a load of really decent books being released by different people. I just wondered, have you ever thought about maybe putting a book together with some of these maps in? Mm, I have been asked, uh, uh, some, someone asked me, I, I think after last year uh, about that. And I think the main, main thing that, that I'm thinking there is that um, I don't really own the, own, own mm. the contents. So, so, and I don't, I don't really want to own the contents. So I, I think um, like fiddling in, and, and then, then I would have to choose some of the maps, right. what would be included. And, and I think the coolest thing is that you can be a cartography student or you can be, there, there were, like last year, there were some people um, who had never made a map before in their life. Hmm. Uh, so, so I think, People are on so different level and, and choosing from those people like the best to, to fit in is one. And then, then the other one is the, uh, the ownership of the results is, is, yeah. is a second one. So yeah, cool. 